Good afternoon again everyone. I'm joined by the very lovely Candice. Here she is. Today we're in Kent and we're sort of in the Seven Oaks Tunbridge sort of area and we're visiting Item Moat which I believe is a 14th century moated manor house. Of course it's National Trust owned so we um, we get free parking and free admission so that's quids in so we're uh, we just parked the car in the car park I've got the National Trust sticker in the window of course free parking yes so we're gonna get free admission as well I'm gonna show you around so anyway let's get exploring item moat in item Kent is a medieval moated manor house the architectural writer John Newman describes it as the most complete small medieval manor house in the county. Item Moat and its gardens are owned by the National Trust and are open to the public. The house is a grade one listed building and parts of it are a scheduled ancient monument. The origins of the house date from circa 1340 to 1360. The earliest recorded owner is Sir Thomas Corn who was resident towards the middle of the 14th century. The house passed by the marriage of his daughter Alice to Nicholas Halt and their descendants, their grandson Richard Halt being Sheriff of Kent in the late 15th century. It was then purchased by Sir Richard Clement in 1521. In 1591 Sir William Selby bought the estate. The house remained in the Selby family for nearly 300 years. Sir William was succeeded by his nephew, also Sir William, who is notable for handing over the keys of Berwick upon Tweed to James I on his way south to succeed to the throne. He married Dorothy Bonham of West Malling but had no children. The Selbys continued until the mid 19th century when the line faltered with Elizabeth Selby, the widow of a Thomas who disinherited his only son. During her reclusive tenure, Joseph Nash drew the house for his multi-volume illustrated history, Mansions of England in the Olden Time, published in the 1840s. The house passed to a cousin, Prudo John Selby, a distinguished naturalist, sportsman and scientist. On his death in 1867, he left Item Moat to a daughter, Mrs. Lewis Marianne Big. Her second husband, Robert Lord, changed his name to Lord Selby. Item Moat was rented out in 1887 to American railroad magnate William Jackson Palmer and his family. For three years, Item Moat became a centre for the artists and writers of the aesthetic movement with visitors including John Singer Sargent, Henry James and Ellen Terry. When Mrs Big died in 1889, the executors of her son, Charles Selby Big, a Shropshire land agent, put the house up for sale in July 1889.
Originally dating to around 1320, the building is important because it has most of its original features. Successive owners effected relatively few changes to the main structure after the completion of the quadrangle with a new chapel in the 16th century. Pevsner described it as the most complete small medieval manor house in the county and it remains an example that shows how such houses would have looked in the Middle Ages. Unlike most courtyard houses of its type, which have had a range demolished so that the house looks outward, Nicholas Cooper observes that Item Moat wholly surrounds its courtyard and looks inward into it, offering little information externally. The construction is of Kentish ragstone and dull red brick. The buildings of the courtyard having originally been built of timber and subsequently rebuilt in stone. The house has more than 70 rooms, all arranged around a central courtyard, the confines circumscribed by the moat. The house is surrounded on all sides by a square moat, crossed by three bridges. The earliest surviving evidence is for a house of the early 14th century, with the Great Hall to which were attached at the high or dais end the chapel, crypt and two solars. The courtyard was completely enclosed by increments on its restricted moated side and a battlemented tower was constructed in the 15th century. Very little of the 14th century survives on the exterior behind rebuilding and refacing of the 15th and 16th centuries. The structures include unusual and distinctive elements such as the porter's squint, a narrow slit in the wall designed to enable a gatekeeper to examine a visitor's credentials before opening the gate. An open lockier with a 15th century gallery above connects the main accommodations with the gatehouse range. The courtyard contains a large 19th century dog kennel. The house contains two chapels the new chapel of circa 1520 having a barrel roof decorated with Tudor roses. Parts of the interior were remodelled by Richard Norman Shaw.
The Mott was purchased by Thomas Coiler Ferguson. He and his wife brought up their six children at the Mott. In 1890-91 to 91, he carried out much repair and restoration which allowed the survival of the house after centuries of neglect. Item Moat was open to the public one afternoon a week in the early 20th century. Sir Thomas Coiler Ferguson's third son, Riversdale, died aged 21 in 1917 in the Third Battle of Yeeps and won a posthumous Victoria Cross. A wooden cross in the new chapel is in his memory. The oldest brother, Max, was killed at the age of 49 in a bombing raid on an army driving school near Tidworth in 1940 during World War II. One of the three daughters, Mary, called Polly, married Walter Monckton. On Sir Thomas's death in 1951, the property and the baronetcy passed to Max's son, James. The high costs of upkeep and repair of the house led him to sell the house and auction most of the contents. The sale took place in October 1951 and lasted three days. It was suggested that the house be demolished to harvest the lead on the roofs or that it be divided into flats. Three local men purchased the house, William Durling, John Goodwin and John Baldock. They paid £5,500 for the freehold in the hope of being able to secure the future of the house. In 1953, Item Moat was purchased by Charles Henry Robinson, an American of Portland, Maine, United States. He had known the property when stationed nearby during the Second World War. He lived there for only 14 weeks a year for tax reasons. He made many urgent repairs and partly refurnished the house with 17th century English pieces. In 1965 he announced that he would give item Mo and its contents to the National Trust. He died in 1985 and his ashes were immured just outside the crypt. The National Trust took possession in that year. In 1989 the National Trust began an ambitious conservation project that involved dismantling much of the building and recording its construction methods before rebuilding it. During this process the effects of centuries of ageing, weathering and the destructive effect of the death watch beetle were highlighted. The project ended in 2004 after revealing numerous examples of structural and ornamental features which had been covered up by later additions. The final year of construction was followed by the television series Time Team.
Okay, well that's the end of that video. That was a little look at the lovely item moat here in Kent. I want to say thank you to Candice for joining me. She's not actually that little, she's on a slope. <laughs> and uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the history of this magnificent house. And this is the first National Trust property that we've been to uh, since we've, we've joined. So got in here for free, parking for free. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Cheers for watching, guys. I appreciate your support. You'll see us again soon. Take care of yourselves, look after each other. See you again soon. Bye. Bye. Okay, and I'm not done there, people. We've just worked out that it was about £15 for each of us to get into item moat today if we were non-members to park here all day two pound so we have saved 32 pound today and it costs us on our current membership scheme with national trust eight pound 40 a month yeah that's for both of us so what four pound 20 each yeah. bargain <laughs> absolute bargain